for let's stay in the northeast region because the overlord of Mamprugu traditional council and president of the uh, northeast regional house of chiefs has appealed uh, to the government to resume the construction of infrastructural projects that have been abandoned in the area the Nairi in particular uh, called for the completion of all abandoned road projects in the region he spoke at the annual bewa homecoming event correspondent Ilyasu was also there the Anwak Bewa Homecoming event is an initiative by the Mamprugu Youth Association to bring together the sons, daughters and all descendants of Nagbewa to rekindle and strengthen their, their Bradley and sisterhood. Nagbewa, the great African king, is the ancestor of the Mamprugu, Dagbon, Nano and Mosi people. The theme for this year's occasion was strengthening relationships with our neighbors through culture and education, the role of the youth. It was held in the traditional capital of Mamprugu and attended by a wide range of dignitaries including chiefs, politicians, religious leaders, youth groups, amongst others. In his opening address, the president of the Mamprugu Youth Association, Idris Shaib called on the descendants of Nagbewa to appreciate their diversity and value the bonds that unite them. The president declared their fullest support for the establishment of the Nairo Educational Fund in line with the commitment to education in Mamprugu. My to support the launch of the Nairo Education and Endowment Fund, and we will do everything we can in to ensure its sustainability. We are by this. And all sons and daughters of Mamrugu to support the fund. This is not just a financial initiative. It is an investment in the intellectual growth of our youth. By contributing, we ensure that educational opportunities become a beacon of hope for generations to come. The Maya president also expressed concern about the growing incidence of hard drugs use among the youth and called for a concerted national response to the menace. Together, let us explore effective measures to address this challenge and nurture an environment that fosters the physical and mental health of our young people. The Mamprugu Youth Association also announced the introduction of an award scheme aimed at motivating the workforce of the region and improving productivity. Today, I am proud to introduce the Bewa Excellence Award. The introduction of this award scheme is aimed to motivate the workforce of the region to improve their productivity and improve their work performance. Recognizing and celebrating excellence is a powerful motivator for progress and development. Speaking on behalf of the Yana, a paramount chief of Nauton who led a nine-member delegation to the event, Na M. B. Bawa, congratulated the Mamprugu overlord for his enormous contribution to the continual peace and tranquility in northern Ghana. I congratulate you for your spirit and sense of unity and mutual coexistence. Over the years, and largely contributing to the peace, in the three kingdoms. The Yana suggested replication of the ceremony annually in the other kingdoms of the Gbewa lineage. There were also speeches delivered by representatives of Nanong, Musi, and leaders of the youth groups. A speech was also read on behalf of the Nairi, Nabaga Abdullah Mahami Shariga. Let's carry the spirit of unity, understanding, cooperation beyond these festivities. Let it be guided, let it guide our actions, inspire our youth, and strengthen the bond that connects us as one people. The overlord also voiced his concern about the disturbing phenomenon of drug peddling among the youth whilst announcing the creation of an educational fund as part of measures to address the dangerous trend. In seeking the sustainability of this noble endeavor, I earnestly appeal to all the sundry to contribute generously to the education endowment fund. Your support is vital in ensuring that educational opportunities are not only offered but also perpetrated for the benefit of the generation to come. On the development of the new region, the Mamprugu overlord and president of the regional house of chiefs called on the government to resume and complete all stalled projects in the region. Furthermore, I appeal to the government to make concerted efforts to resume the construction of vital roads that connect our towns and villages. Road, Nasia Road, Nasia Road, and other major roads 
The regional minister Yidana Zakari praised the organizers of the event and advised it be sustained. Sayidana extended the same praises to the overlord while assuring him of government commitment to the development of the region. From Nalirgu for Joy News, Ilyas Sutanku reporting. Well, elsewhere in Europe, German farmers have kicked off a week of nationwide protests blocking roads with uh, tractors and tracks across the country, putting pressure on Chancellor Olaf Scholz's government. So let's speak now to our partners, the DW, and joining us uh, for more on this is Emily Scholz uh, for more live from Berlin. Thank you uh, for spending some time with us. So now, what's happening there and what's behind this latest wave of protests we are hearing about? So the farmers are protesting over cuts to subsidies that affect them, in particular fuel subsidies for some of their various vehicles. And this has come as a result of a budget shortfall in Germany last year and some budget cuts heading into this year. It's something that has it's not that there have never been farmers protests before, but this is really at an unprecedented scale. And so you're seeing not just here in, in the capital, but in cities and towns across the country, um, sort of an unprecedented level of anger and frustration with this government. And that's something that has, has been directed at different government officials, in particular the vice chancellor, Robert Habeck, uh, including people accosting him on his vacation and cutting his vacation short uh, over these issues. There are many who are wondering what the underlying problem is uh, facing these farmers, the reason for which uh, they've been carrying out this protest in Germany. Sure. So this is a culmination of, of a lot of bigger factors that are affecting the industry. You have uh, a, about 250,000 farms in Germany, many of them smaller and medium sized farms. And these are the ones that are really facing a financial crunch. So there's a pressure to keep prices lower for consumers. But that often means that farmers are, are being squeezed on their end to try and make ends meet. And so that's why you saw this issue of of these subsidies really sort of galvanizing this frustration and this, uh, this support for the protests across the country. There's the question as to how the other political forces are trying to co-opt the protest. How is that panning out? Of a lot of bigger factors that are affecting the industry. You have uh, a, about 250,000 farms in Germany, many of them smaller and medium sized farms. And these are the ones that are really facing a financial crunch. So there's a pressure to keep prices lower for consumers, but that often means that farmers are, are being squeezed on their end to try and make ends meet. And so that's why you saw this issue of, of these subsidies really sort of galvanizing this frustration and this, uh, this support for the protests across the country. Lee Schultes with our partners at DW, uh, thank you for spending some time with us. You're watching The Pulse here on the Join News channel. We'll be back shortly.